What we're going to do is, is put together the Boz kit in our pamphlet in the picture when we did a swell fork and it's steel pictures throughout 1 through 12 I believe it is we're going to do a slick fork which is basically the same thing other than at the very end we're going to mount the thigh rolls would be basically the only difference and um, so so we're going to go ahead and get started here I think today's date is uh, 3 10 09 we've been working hard on this it's uh, it's fun it's easy and you and your horse are going to love it um, as you can see with the starting of the kit you basically get the skirts already mounted for you the stirrup leathers mounted we just pull it through we'll get to this later and I just put it in this position right now and it also has the, the latigos now we're going to go step by step on trying to uh, put this one together uh, this particular saddle has a pony ring we're going to mount that on the back I'll pull this out a little bit so I can get behind it and I'll mount this little pony ring You'll just go ahead and insert it in the, the T-nuts. I do a little bit on each side. There'll be a place that it bottoms out and it quits. Um, it was something I designed to be able to pick the saddle up, to hang the saddle. The most important part is to lead or pony a horse. It's much safer. You basically take the lead rope. The lead rope's going to come from behind and up around the back of the cantle and put your leg on top and the rope just hangs here. Gives you two hands to guide. At any time if you lift up your leg, the rope completely comes out, you never tie solid to this pony ring. <clears throat> it's much safer than trying to half wrap around a horn, guide with one hand, hang on with the other, and if your horse starts to turn to the left, that rope will pull against your thigh, you can't get off, and, and it's a complete big mess. So the rope again comes from the bottom up, around the back of the cantle, and your leg goes over the top of it. The remaining part just lays up here. You guide and the pressure of your leg will stop it from coming out. The horse can go on either side. Okay, after we've mounted the pony ring, the next thing we're going to do, I'll turn this out so you can see it, we're going to mount a little crouper ring. These little rings have a little screw, has a little indentation at the bottom. You're going to place this ring in the center you don't have to use chalk, but I will. In the center, probably can't even see it. And uh, I just hold it in place. And if you put your finger on this back side, you can feel the tip just barely come, and then you just stop. And there's your little ring. Okay. Okay, go ahead and put it on pause for a second. Okay, what we're going to do now, number three, we're going to mount the ground seat. As you can see on the on the tree, there's a there's a line drawn here. There's really a kind of a little ridge in the tree. These are our custom trees, and the front edge goes that. I just dotted a line with some felt pen marker, and I can kind of turn this down a little bit so you can see it. You're placing it so that you can. Get this front edge kind of lined up and the top lined up the best you can. And what I'm going to do, once I get it kind of lined up, um, I'm going to get my screw gun. I'm going to screw a couple of them in my mouth. Hold this down. Come across. And I want to try to get this corner screwed in. I screw that one in, kind of stretch things out. You want to kind of smooth this over a little bit.
not here. Oops. We'll just let that one go. After I get that, what I want to try to do, kind of smooth this out in the back, and I'm going to screw one right here. If you follow this tree right on up the sew so, so line, <clears throat> I want the screw to be in the tree. There's a hollow point, what we call the throat. So off this thread, I'm going to come over about a quarter of an inch or so, and sew so in and hold this this from bubbling up same with this side over here I'll follow this line up this stitch line right here in this groove come over about a quarter of an inch and that'll stop that from bubbling <clears throat> now I can go ahead and finish down the sides These are hat, uh, three quarter inch stainless steel screws. Everything we use is stainless steel. We don't have anything that rust, rots. Almost two or three more. Okay, there's the ground seat is in. It's Velcro. This is a new system that we put in <clears throat> so we can peel and stick. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the saddle upside down. Okay, we've finished the ground seat. Now what we're going to do is put on the rear, the rear points. They'll be marked. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the saddle upside down. You can see them. You want to put them about a quarter of an inch or so around the, the end. You're going to place one pretty much in the middle of this X. Just You don't want it stuck out this way. You don't want it up tight. Just kind of get it about a quarter of an inch all the way around. It doesn't, ha doesn't have to be perfect. That center one, you can kind of move it, and you can pick a corner. Okay. 
come down about a two inches or so jumps approximately Okay, as you can see, I just went ahead and transferred uh, and went ahead and did the other side. So it's all completely screwed in. We can flip the saddle back up and get ready to put in the next item. Okay, where we're at now is number five. We put in the rivets. Um, we showed it in the, in, in the steel photos that number five people were going to put on the, the latigos and I decided that we would just install them here they're just wrapped up and out of the way so your latigos are already in stage five so the next thing is is number six and six are the stirrup leather adjusters and we're going to put those on I'm going to get me a uh, Phillips Phillips head Okay, so what's going to happen now, I had to change out the bit for Phillips. All these other screws that we've been put in are square drive. So you put in Phillips. You notice that there's a hole, hole in the slot. So we call narrow twist. It lets the tree move and twist with the horse's back. And what we're going to do is put these little spoon attachments for the stirrups, stirrup leathers. And you'll put the hairy side out. You're going to come from the hole back to this line. You can come back. Oh, I'll mark it here for you so you can see. I, I screw them in oh, about right here, away from the hole. There's going to be one on the left and the right. Again, they screw in with the, the hairy side of the leather, not the smooth side, the hairy side. So when it flips over, it can be adjusted for the stirrup leathers. So you just... one on this side and we'll screw one on the other when it's done you'll see how it adjusts up through and locks the stirrup leather and we'll get to that in a second when we put on the stirrups so we'll attach one this side spin it around <clears throat> I just come back to that hole about half inch or three eighths or so and screw it in these leather pieces are so that you don't lose these if they fell out. When you're adjusting, they're attached. The next item we're going to put on is the stirrups. You'll notice that the stirrups are designed with a, a nut on one side and a smooth. I want the smooth to the outside. Okay, and this bar is there for a purpose, and I'll show you once I put them on. To put your stirrups on, this bar here goes to this side. You're just going to take your leathers over the top. What I want you to do, as if that stirrup was um, to be, you know, position to put your foot in it, you're going to go between the leather bar and up. Technically, if you were to do this, the smooth would be facing forward so that when you turned your foot, put your foot in the stirrup leather, then it's to the outside, okay? And then you'll take your leather and go over the bar. There's a slot, a notch. It'll come out the bottom. And you'll pull it down. You'll take your spoon. In this case, the holes are numbered. You know, nine, eight, seven, six, five, the half spots are in between. Well, I'm just going to put it on number six, push it up, and when you try to pull it back over the tree, it will lock. And that adjusts. Now, the purpose for this leather bar is so that the stirrup cannot swing around. Never take my stirrup leathers and choke it off with a collar. You do, they ball up. 
they won't let the leather go through smoothly. So this leather bar was designed so the stirrup can't flip. So you do not need to choke. Any stirrup leather you see choked off, you lose 80% efficiency. This leather will stay flat as it goes forward and back because it's not choked. We don't get a balling up under your leg. Okay? If you want a forward stirrup, you'll put your legs forward and this leather from here down is much shorter than this one. If you want the stirrup in the center, it will equal out the V. These leathers become the same. And if you want the stirrup underneath you, the back leather will get shorter and this one will get longer. And you can adjust your stirrup position because of this V. No other saddle in the world does this. Now we turn it around. As you can see now, the stirrups are already on. It has a swivel. And we're ready to go to the next one. The next one are our footman loops. We're going to mount them. I gotta get a couple screws. And you can see, I gotta change this bit out again. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, what we're gonna do now is just attach some inch and a half footman loops. They're stainless steel. As you can see, there's a, um, a parting line right here. We just come over about a half inch, screw them in, and these are used to either tie on bags or whatever, but basically they're here for a back cinch. We have a special back cinch that we designed at the shop that goes in the flank and we feed it through here because there's not a full skirt. So let me go ahead and mount this on for you. Again, they just need to be about a half inch or so from that line, about a half inch, half inch in this way, and a half inch over this way, approximately. Now that could be perfect. Make it square, straight in line. Don't turn it like this. Just make it equal, come in a half inch over here, and screw it in. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay, the next option we're gonna do um, is we're going to we're talking about a performance seat we have a pleasure seat or performance and the pleasure uh, is, is a big seat we measure the seat from the palm of the cannel but because we don't have a big rise in the seat here uh, we get a full 15 if you have a, a big rise in the seat and you measure from here back only got five inches this is not a 15 inch seat folks this is only a five inch seat move this back an inch and make it a 16 it's not 16 you just went a six inches well, what happens, because our seats are, are larger, because there's, you, we want you to sit up towards the pommel and not be shoved back towards the cantle, away from the withers, there are some riders that we have what we call a performance seat. And basically all it is, it's a padding built in that scoops this thing so that the rider from the center forward, it's flat, and from the center back, it's filled in. And to come with that, if you were to get this option, we basically measure down an inch and you just come an inch all the way down from the top and once you've done that then you'll draw a line this center sewing should be pretty much the center of the seat I'm hoping uh, and then you draw a center here what you're going to do is position this padding to fill this void in you're going to put it on the center and right even with the top Okay, so you're going to put it in the center. You're going to have the, uh, this is the hook and this is the carpet. The center of this line to the center of this and follow this line. And, and you're going to push it, push it in and bow it in the center so it fills in this cavity back here. Line it up. Push it. And what's going to happen, it's going to make that seat scoop. That it's like a ski lift and when you get to the center from here, from here to here, it's flat, and I want the rider right behind the withers. Here, if a rider pushes back, it keeps sliding them, keeps sliding them, keeps sliding them forward. They can't get back here. You don't ever want to saddle with a big dish and a high cannel, because everyone sits back here, and they're 13 inches too far away from the withers. Nobody's getting much done back there other than talk. <clears throat> 
So what we want to do is build this up for someone that has a smaller, smaller gluteus maximus and keep them forward. Somebody that has more gluteus maximus, they don't need this padding. They will fill this in naturally and that will keep them with their pelvic behind the pommel and not back on the cannon. So in this case right now, this particular saddle uh, does not have a performance seat so we can pull it out. But you can put it in and take it out anytime you like. Okay, we're ready to put in the top. This is an English style, it's a bigger, bigger flap. Um, you can see on the bottom, as if on the steel shots, I draw a line down the center. There's a line down the center of the seat. And what you're going to do when you start to line this up, is you're going to pull this back and you're going to try to bring this in. You can see I'm kind of bended a little bit. It's not a big problem if it sticks, you just unstick it. And you're going to try to line up this tip right at the top right here, right on that one at the back and try to get it centered as you come to yourself. Okay, as you look around, you want to make sure that it's not twisted like this where nothing is here and it's all stick, stuck up this way. So what happened to me, it kind of moved like this. So I'm just going to kind of release it. I'm going to try it again. It doesn't matter how many times. I'm going to try to line this up best I can. Come in. It's close here. Close over here. Looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is pull it up because it, it's curved and I'm going to look at this line here and as I push it, push this seat into that cavity back here, I'm going to push it down, kind of push down and, and roll it, put my hand in here and kind of feather that out and keep rolling forward so it goes down the center, falls in place and then I'm going to rub my knuckles and fill that in and get that all stuck. Now, I'm going to come around the front. I'm going to make sure that I've got nice coverage here in the front, each side, pretty close to equal. This, this leather here piece gets equal on each side. I want these points up in, up, up in here good so when I screw through that hole that I'm getting getting a good bite into the tree. Don't get too far out in front of the tree. You want right down when you see this curve here you want to come in about a, you know three quarters of an inch or so. So I draw a line straight this way, this way and I come up about an inch here. And I find a spot uh, basically. And that does this side and we're going to be okay on this side. That'll set me up. Okay. I start to feel the back so I see if I got an equal, you know, amount going over the back. I want to, you know, plenty to be able to screw. There's two ways you can do it. You can let it lay rest like that, or I'm going to take some screws, about seven, eight of them, and screw this back down. But I don't want a bunch over here and nothing over here. It's going to be able to fold over nicely and I can put a screw in and you'll see me do that here in a second. Okay? Okay. I'm going to show how, you know, I'm going to put a couple screws across this back. You're going to get a bunch of these stainless steel three-quarter inch screws. And uh, I fold it over, make sure that you're in the tree. Kind of hold it down. Uh, let me get over here where I can, you can see me. I kind of take my fingers and, and hold it down and then hold the hair the best you can. Press. If you start to wrap hair, just back it out, hold it down again and, and start and finally it'll it'll work. I'll put another one right in here. And I'm gonna come on this corner. Kind of fold this over. Make sure that you get it. You want to make sure that you get it in this leather hide not just through the fuzz fuzz won't hold anything you have to find that piece of leather and go and i'm going to finish and go across the back now about every two inches or so i put a screw
Okay, what's going to happen now? You're going to get a set of strings. The front ones, are, we call these are 5 8 clips and these, and then we put a scissor snap so that you can hook things. But what you're going to do on this front, and I'll walk over here, you want to attach, you want to make sure that you get into this leather here. Don't, don't do it just through this pig, it's too thin. You have to get attached uh, through this leather in here. And, and you want to be at least, if I can get the shadow out of the way, you want to be at least one inch above the stirrup leather. Let me pull this back. You want to be about one inch, which is my thumb. About a thumb, you want to be up, up in here so it doesn't restrict the turn of this stirrup leather. So you want to get here. You don't want to get too far because you can see the tree right here. You're going to miss it. So you want to kind of get in here. You go through and you want to get through this leather piece here, not just the sheepskin. So sometimes you can make a mark and, and you take the leather and you fold it. And when you do, you take a pen and after you find your mark, you kind of mark it over to your leather, poke yourself a hole and you know that you're going to come out on that spot. From here, transfer over to this piece. Once you find that, in this case, this particular saddle, because it's a slick work, has thigh rolls. So we're going to take this clip and D instead of just attaching it here by itself. I'm going to attach it by going through the thigh roll. So what I've got to do is get it through. I've already marked my hole. I take a um, ice pick kind of a thing and I poke through, kind of open that up for me. Find it through the top side, through the hair, poke it down. And this is the tricky part, is trying to get, find that and keep working it back and forth and you'll feel the tip of it fall in that hole. If it doesn't, keep trying it till you find it. I think it's there. Oops. Try it again. You may have to play with it a couple of times so you find that it goes through that hole. And you can see it's coming. Then what's going to happen, I'm going to line that up on that other one and then drill them in. <clears throat> in this case I'm going to transfer out. I think my little drills about had it. Maybe, maybe not. If it gets tight in the way, you can reverse it, straighten it up. Make sure it's good and Straight. <clears throat> Line that up. Let me do the other side. And we're starting to position these. You can figure out how you want these to lay. But right now we'll leave it like this. I'm going to put on the other side and we'll come back to this. Okay, what we're going to do now, uh, on the last one, the, the screw started tightening up in the leather before it went into the tree. So what I want you to do is hold it there and spin it. So it takes away that. So now we don't have that problem of the tightening the leather and everything in this, this thigh roll. Then you're going to find that spot. Let me spin it around. You can see that it's come through. Now I'm going to put it into its spot. Lock this stand. I'm 
grab hold of this D because it's spinning on me. Just let it spin. <laughs> Back it out, try to get the lock again, hold that D. And tighten that up. <clears throat> so that'll hold that piece there. Now what we're going to do, I can go back to my little drill. And the other thing you can do, you can put that in a hand. Um, Get you a nice um, hand screwdriver. You can finish that out by hand. Make sure that they're tight. And that should do it. Okay. Okay, we're going to finish putting on the thigh rolls, you notice that I want the tips, if you were to follow the top of the pommel, I want the tips to line up on the top. Some people, you can, you can pull them down, you can wrap them around like this, but I prefer them coming across the top of this pommel, kind of up out of the way. You also have to be careful that when you do this, when you start to come up, that you don't want to go, this screw here has to bite in the tree. If you go up too far, this screw is going to come out in front. So usually when you follow this top, that tip, and you press that in, you'll see that you can get this one, this one. This one's not a problem. This one, you don't want to get it out in front of the tree. So you follow this top with this tip, kind of press it down. I hold it in place. And we screw this one in. With this little tool, you can go ahead and just do it by hand if it gets to be over torqued. I forgot to show you that, and I went to that other screwdriver. I really don't have to. I forgot that this little tool that we're, we have will automatically hand, hand tighten it. Once you have that one, you'll press this one in. You can finish it off by hand. And then you have this one back here, just fold it in. Okay, and that's installed. Now what's going to happen, you're going to do the same thing with this one. You have to kind of line it straight across the best you can. Make sure that your front screw is not stuck out past the tree. You've got to go in the tree and you kind of go, you kind of eyeball it this way. And then you can kind of look, look at it from the rear. Again, I like to look at it coming straight across. Hold it down with this hand. Okay, what we're going to do now is that you can see that the thigh rolls in a couple places here have like a little air pocket. So what you can do is, is uh, you know, something, just kind of rub this. You can rub it out, kind of flatten them down. You go all the way around your thigh rolls and kind of flatten those down. Only a couple spots that you'll see. It'll take a while. If you really want to do it, you can wet them <laughs> and you wet them with a sponge and then you can really wipe them down and you just want to kind of smooth all that out. The next thing after you've done that and kind of, and the more you use a saddle, they'll just start conforming. But this is just a faster way to get them down. 
And then there's a couple spots these little washers are in the way. You can take your little hammer and kind of flatten them out. And that works. Okay. We'll get ready for the next piece. What we're going to do now is we're going to attach our clip and D with a string right here at the corner. What you want to do is you want to lift it up and find your leather. In this case, there's a little hole that we marked in here. So again, you want to try to find that. And you want to screw this, if I can show you, you want to screw this again where it's coming through this support panel. Don't get it just in this little sheepskin, it won't hold. So I have a little mark there. <clears throat> I'll get my little pick. I just took an ice pick and broke it off. Redid it. You can use a full length and just kind of find that through that hair. And you feel it. And you I'm gonna try to get that screw to go through there and then into the tree. I feel it with my finger, hoping that I can get that screw in that little hole. came through my hole. Can you see it? See how I got got the leather and the screw? So we're going to go, I'm going to kind of push down with my thumb, hold this in place. I lock my stand. Push my thumb and push that sheepskin down. Get that square. Okay, and I'm going to go and do the other side now. Okay, next thing we're going to do is mount our third string. They're on a little strap eye. You kind of just fit them where they kind of butt up across from that little footman loop, this screw and that screw. You just kind of come straight across where I like to put them. You can put them wherever you want to. I just put them right here. So let me get me a little screw. Kind of line it straight across kind of straighten it out you know so it's coming back straight and that's done I'm gonna do the other side now now I'm gonna put two strap eyes up in front so that you can tie things on <clears throat> I go ahead and put a screw I like to mount them, you know, just kind of along the side here. You can put them wherever you want them. <laughs> they just screw in. I'll screw the other one on. It gives you something else to tie to. Okay. No. Okay, what happens? We have a breathing hole in the tree because it's full of air and it works. There's two ways to cover this up. You can either, it's going to come with this uh, if you don't order the compass. And, and it will have these two screws, stainless steel screws, that will mount this on. In this particular case, this, this rider one to the compass. So the compass is going to cover up that breather hole. Enough that you can't see it. Okay, so one or the other will cover up that breather hole. Okay, what's going to happen when we're getting ready to put on the name tag? I like to place them back here. This tree has a slide bow to it. So what you do is you take your name tag on a corner and run it back and forth and kind of put a little teeny bit of bow in it. Then go to your tree and see how it sets up. In this case, I got it on. I have two little screws or screw nails. I like to use a pair of little needle nose so that you don't hit your finger. 
And I had already, I had set this up here and squared it and put a little mark at each hole <coughs> prior to this. So I can put it in that little mark. I don't have to hold it and I just get it kind of started. You want to hit them slow so that they twist and go in and tighten up. You hit them too fast, they just go in straight. So you want to lightly tap them. In this case, I'm going to put it in the other little mark I have. Now I'm going to finish it. And I just lightly tap them. On each side. Real easy. And then they just tighten up. And there's her name. Okay, now we're ready to start putting on our sponge comfort bars or pads on the bottom with the Velcro system. You're going to take your saddle. Well, you know what we need to do? <laughs> what we're going to do here first, I'm going to get these latigos out of my way. I had them tied up. In this case, we'll just let them hang down for right now. We'll get back to that in a second. I need to undo them. I'm going to take this saddle, turn it up like a turtle. Get these strings out of my way. And start out with the first pad. You'll notice that in this pad, there's an indentation right here. It's not a perfect curve. I like to draw a line across that. That's going to tell me how far to come out on the front. And then, after I find this front, in other words, I'm going to line this up and I'm going to kind of follow this Velcro from, from this big hole here uh, is the most important. Don't worry so much back right here, right now. And I scoot that out so that it's touching in three places. It's touching right here. So from here down, it's following the Velcro right on top of the big hole, the, the breast collar hole, and stops here. Then from here up, it's sticking past the skirt half inch okay and that tells you the front's okay and then the back you lay it down that it divides equally in the center on the back if the tree's in here you don't want it down this way if not unstick it and do it again this will have it laid nicely that when I turn the saddle up you'll see that the point of the bar is equally distributed. You don't want it stuck, pulled down, and, and all of it's down here and there's nothing up here. Just divide it equally in the center. Turn the saddle. Get over on this side. I take this bar. Get this thing set up here. I kind of bend this up here so I can fold it. I walk this out in front that that front touches that skirt just on top of the breast collar hole just on top of the rigging hole that does this and then I lay it down square to itself and these should be almost touching like you got a karate chop that's it you can't get anything through here it opens up in the front and to the rear but right here I want it cupping the spine I don't like to see them slid down here and slid here and have a four inch hole it will pinch on each side of the spine, you do that all day long, and this side hurts and this side hurts. If you take your hand and cup like this, you can't believe the distribution. So that's why I want this, and it's been tested to do better this way. You move them wherever you want to. You can put half inch on one side, one inch on the other, balance it out. That's why I put the Velcro system. I was the first in the world to do this. And others now copy me and say they have a patent. Okay, so now those. Okay, now we're getting ready to cinch up. I'm gonna take this stirrup, come all the way over, and hook it on that thigh roll. Kind of hold that up, I think. It'll hold it, maybe not. I'm gonna take my cinch. These are custom cinches. The three things that are options are the stirrups, the cinch, and the breast collar. This particular person got them. The way this is rigged up, I'm gonna fold this out of the way so you can see. You're gonna take your latigo, go through your buckle through the main hole one time come back to the buckle and each side is numbered 13 14 15 whatever you should be if you're 8 on this side you should be 8 on that side or 10 and 10 once in a while you could be an 8 and a 9 which is a half jump 
but you'll never be an 8 and a 10. That's two jumps over there here. You should be 9-9, nine, nine. so equal it out so that this little buckle is in the center of his chest uh, and not off to one side. So I'll put it up in this case, number 9. I will pull this out and lock that pin in it. Now, the tongue, there's three things you can do with the tongue to get rid of it. One, you can go half and then fold up two-thirds and stuff it in your cinch. And that last two-thirds leaves that little tail so that when I get through, I pull it all out and it comes done, undone. Two, you can come back here, come up. You're going against the horse, come up and down the bottom one and it locks and spreads this all out and there's absolutely nothing under your leg when this stirrup falls. Or three, you can do it this way. You just take it and come up through the forward hanger and just let it go. These places here and here are never to be rigging and tightened up. They're only holders. I've seen people send my saddles back that used it for a center fire, some goofy deal, and used this and cinched and pulled and elongated these things look like it was unbelievable, and I'm going, it's just a hanger. It's just some place to take the tongue and put it. Some people like it here. This is the way Foreman did it for years. And then I put it back here, designed it to come up and back. And it locks and kind of keeps a sense back. And if you don't have very much to reach those areas, some people don't have enough latigo left over on a big horse, don't worry about it. Just take it, fold it in half, and two-thirds up. Don't go all the way up because you want to find this tail. So just go two-thirds and stuff it in your cinch. Okay? Now what I do with my cinches, let's say we got through riding and the bottom side is wet. I don't like to have these things turn and hung and, and get this wet. They, they just come straight up, wet side out, and just snap them in place. Now they air out and there's nothing against your saddle. The next thing we're going to put on it is a little kennel bag. This is an option. There's two little brass rings in this. And a <laughs> now what's going to happen, you attach this kennel bag. These are just like key rings or whatever. You just open them up. Put them over your D and twist them. They lock. Pull this around. Again, if I can get my fat fingers in there. Huh. I can't get it opened up. There it goes. Now I can spin it. You just spin it, lock it in place. Got some rubber on this, I gotta polish it off. And there's your little candle bag, kind of cleans up the back. I'll get that off with a brush. The other option on this saddle is the pony ring. This particular customer wanted it, and, and they we mounted it on. Again, we showed you at the first of the tape. So I think, and then the last one is your breast collar. The breast collars, there's two different styles. This is a basic, and then we have a deluxe. All the breast collar holes are numbered. And you'll see a rigging hole on your skirt right here. Any higher up, some people put their breast collars up here. They're way too high, the angle's too steep. The saddle has to slide back at least six inches for the angle to drop to be able to actually stop a saddle from moving back. <clears throat> this is not low like Western and it's not high like the English. It's something that Monty did years ago. We'll flip that up. You run it through your skirt it's numbered, so you want the same numbers on each side. <clears throat> In this case, to, to hold this, now this would come across and do the same thing, same number. And there's another tape that we talk about adjusting gear and whatever. Now I throw this thing up over the top and across. I take my cinch, snap on this side, <laughs> and just hook it. And there we go. This offside to set this latigo, because this is undone, that's how I do it. In this case, we're just gonna go through. Once, go through that front one, I bring it back and go through this one. 
and it locks it down and this will fold. So that was ready to go. And there you have it. That's your kit. It's all done. I don't know how much time it basically to build that saddle, but this is actual time. These tapes are called balls you edit. There's other tapes that I'm thinking about doing on training, shoeing, whatever. But we say you edit is, is that instead of me having the cost of editing hours and hours and hours, you edit. If it's going too slow, you're bored, just fast forward, go on to something else. Let's get you in the saddles. I'm glad that you trusted me on this new kit. I think it's something that's going to be really nice for the industry. And it's a great product. There's nothing in it that's cheap. Uh, it's the best leather that money can buy. You get the patented famous Boz Springflex Air Tree. There's never been a saddle tree or saddle in the world that will do what my saddle does or anything else that we build. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please call me at 559-542-1269. Again, that's 559-542-1269. Or come see us at the Boz New Training School. We're going to have classes on horsemanship, on beginning, to how to finish a horse, um, to shoeing classes, to saddle building, to bits, to boots, you name it. We're going to have the school. So if you have any questions, please call me and um, please wear your t-shirt and give me a testimony on your, on your kit. We would like to get others to trust us and get their kit in their hands. And uh, may you always ride a good horse and your good horse enjoy you more through the Boz equipment.